couple new effects. So let me go to the effects and presets. There. They are what are called Psychor effects. I'll type CC up here in the search box. CC. And that uh, uh, gets you to all the various CC effects. And CC stands for Psychor. C-Y-C-O-R-E. Psychor. Psychor is a company based in Sweden that years ago uh, dove deep into the After Effects engine and created these great effects that use the engine and the, other, and the effects that are built into After Effects to create these even cooler effects. And uh, they were all plugins that you could buy. And uh, then uh, Adobe just saw the value of Psychor's stuff and said, you know, let's just include it with the uh, After Effects. And, you know, I presume they've got some kind of licensing agreement worked out. I don't know the details, but now you've got tons of Psychor effects inside After Effects. Fantastic effects. And the new ones are, let's see, where are they? I'm going to go on a search for uh, hex, hex tile. If I just double click on hex tile, it'll add it to this particular clip. And there's hex tile. Looks kind of like a beehive. And there's a center here. If I drag the center around, notice I drag it around here. I'm trying to find Brooks's face. It's kind of hard to find when the tiles are so small. So I can increase the radius. And there you go. And I can drag it to, let's say, his eye, something like that. And then I can change the size of the tile to make it smaller or larger. These are obviously keyframable. And you can swirl around that. You can rotate around the center, like so. And smear it. It's kind of cool. You can kind of pull away from it like that. It's called smearing. And then there are just three different kinds of tiles. There's the standard tile like that. And the two other ones that get pretty wild and wacky. There's these guys that are called folded kind of folded in on themselves, and, uh, but they retain the cell structure. If you go to fold it seamlessly, you get rid of the cell structure. And if Brooks were watching this now, he would pr probably say, why are you doing this to my face, Jeff? But there you go. Pretty cool stuff. All right, that's CC hex tile. I'll delete that by selecting it and pressing delete. Other one's called CC vignette. I'll just double click on that and watch what happens when I, I apply it. It immediately puts a vignette around here. If you know what a vignette is, that just kind of either darkens or lightens the edges. You can choose. But the here in this particular case, it's going to just darken it. You can't choose it here. And how much choose like that? Oh, there's the dark. Excuse me. I'm sorry. You can't lighten it by going to less than 100 like that, less than zero. So more, most frequently, you typically darken the edges, and that shows you how much you're darkening it. And you can change the center. So I click on the center. This is the center there. You can change you know, where it's centered. Probably want to center on his face. And what's cool about this is that you can, um, it's called pin the highlights. There's some highlights here inside this painting, like that one right there. If you pin the highlights, then you retain the highlights, even though you still have a vignette. Notice how that little bright spot right there and right there came back when I pin the highlights. It's a really cool feature that you don't lose these cool little highlights, even though you're making it darker there. So that's vignette, and that's CC vignette. All right. How are we doing so far? Anyone have any questions? Anyone out there? I'll just stop for a moment. For any questions? Let's see. Finally, a vignette effect. No longer do we need to use the mask for this. <laughs> a comment from Sealard saying that actually is a vignette effect. And uh, and yeah, normally you'd use a mask for it. In fact, now that Sealard brought that up, I'll show you how that works. The old way of doing this was that you would um, typically apply an, an oval to this page, to this image using a mask. And uh, one way you do that is by going to the shape and getting the ellipse tool and just double clicking on it and it automatically, oops, come on, thought that was going to do that. Why didn't it do it? Try it again. There you go. It automatically adds uh, what's called a mask. And what it does, the mask protects an area and then makes the other area transparent. And so basically we have this black area here. And then you can uh, adjust this in terms of opacity and uh, also the soft edges to it. You open up the mask. And this is mask feather. You can feather this a little bit like so. And you can reduce the opacity on it so it's not quite so, oops, wrong way. I meant to, wrong, wrong way to do that. So you gotta change it like so. So that would be the typical way you'd make a mask. And uh, that's now been changed to actually have a special vignette effect for that. So thanks for pointing out the old way, Sealard. And uh, that's just a quick way to do that, the old way. And the funny thing is the other effect that's new now is called Lumetry. And the reason it's funny is because there's a, there's a vignette uh, option inside Lumetri. I'll double click on that to apply Lumetri. And I mentioned earlier that the Lumetri effect is maybe not as cool as uh, you would first think because it looks like a huge effect, particularly if you go to color wheels and you see, wow, look at that. Look what they're doing here. They're giving us this great color correction effect here inside After Effects. 
but the immediate purpose for the lumetri effect, the lumetri color effect to be added to Detrifex is because it's a big powerful feature now inside Premiere Pro. It was added to Premiere Pro as a way to change the whole color workflow inside Premiere Pro. And so they have it in After Effects now such that if you bring a clip, if you link a clip from Premiere Pro into After Effects, which I explained in two previous lessons, then the lumetri effect makes that, makes that voyage into After Effects. So you don't lose something when you come into After Effects. So they have it here for that main reason. But that doesn't mean you can't use it. I mean, if you want to do your color correction work in After Effects, fine. It just doesn't really lend itself as much to color correction as does Premiere Pro because there are no scopes, so like, like the waveform scope or vector scope, inside After Effects. And without those guys, uh, you really are, are kind of handicapped in terms of uh, how you do your color correction. So feel free to, you know, to use this guy, but be, be aware that uh, you're much better off doing your color correction inside Premiere Pro or in Color Finesse, which is the plugin that comes with After Effects, but I really prefer Premiere Pro. But for example, let's say we want to change, we want to warm up the midtones here. You can just click here in the midtones and drag it toward the orange and it will start warming up the midtones here. The midtones are probably, boy, it's going very slowly here. Come on, you can do it better than this. Come on. There we go. It, the midtones are, you know, basically everything here besides the highlights there and his shirt. Those would be the midtones. There we go. And if you want to reset it, just double click here and that resets it back. And you can make the midtones brighter. Well, it's going very slowly. I'm not sure why that is. It was moving like greased lightning earlier today. Come on, why are you so slow? But you can make the midtones darker or lighter, and these are things you can do here. And if you go down to the bottom here, you'll see this is a vignette. Oh my gosh, there's a vignette here too. Increase this, change the vignette this way. But it's not as cool as the uh, Psychor vignette, which uh, even though it says midpoint here, it really just means like that midpoint. So the, the Psychor uh, vignette is a better vignette than the one available here inside Lumetri. Okay, so that's Lumetri. We'll get rid of that.